Hello, Shirley Adams here for a rap session. This is program number 12 and we're going to talk about wraps. When you need a little something extra to keep warm, but not as much as a tailored, lined, interfaced coat, let's consider some of the alternatives which are quick and easy to make. Even a non-sewer can do these. In less than an hour you can make a ruana, which is what I just took off. And this ruana is nothing but two yards of fabric. Now I'm about medium height, I'm about five, six, so two yards is just right for me. Uh, you might need more or less depending on how tall or short you are. So here's two yards. What I'm holding out at the sides here is nothing but the selvage, the original selvage. I didn't touch it. It's just the way the fabric came from the bolt. What I have here in the center though for one of those yards, this is the front of the ruana down here, and what I have done here in the center is simply take my scissors and cut a line right up the middle and that's all. And then I didn't use the serger because I didn't want a lot of thread showing, so I used the sewing machine and instead I just turned this under, oh, just a quarter of an inch or so, not a whole lot, and I zigzagged all along this edge so that uh, the thread really blends in, it doesn't even show. So that's all I've done to this, except for the ends. I have raveled out the ends because this fringe is so beautiful. Like when you get wolves or mohairs, kind of loose open weaves, they fringe beautifully. Make use of that capability and go ahead and fringe it. I've done the same thing at the lower front edge. I've fringed that. Now, after you pull out that fringe, it doesn't take all that long. It's uh, about half a movie's worth of fringing or maybe less if you sit and do it in front of TV. Don't throw away any of those yarns because they're useful. Here are the yarns that I fringed out, these green and burgundy ones. I didn't get up as far as the purples and blues, but these are the ones that I pulled out and I just tied them in a loose knot so I can do other things with them. Now what I can do with these are such things as this. Here are a few suggestions. We might take a sweater that we already have and this sweater had these uh, ribs, this uh, knit pearl ribbing across the top and I thought, gee, isn't that a perfect place to just take a big tapestry needle and do a little embroidery over it. This is about one movie's worth. I kind of gauge it by when I sit down and uselessly watch that. Uh, okay, this is just uh, stitched round and round there with a tapestry needle. That's the one with the blunt point and the big eye that you can do very easily. So it's a whole lot, a big assortment of yarns there. It makes a designer sweater out of a just sweater. So fun thing to do there. Here is another one, and this is probably 15 minutes worth, just as a rough estimate. What I did on this one was, first of all, I had a lot of little short lengths of yarn, and I put them out here straight, so they were sort of like this. There were a lot of them down there and a lot of them sticking up here, and I just uh, sort of arranged them in the circle of this sweater's neckline. And then on the machine, I simply straight stitched across all these yarns. After I had that one line of stitching here, I took one of these combs and just smoothed them all down in place then. And I did about two more rows of stitching on top. So this is just stitched across and stitched back this way. I did zigzag stitches here so that it wouldn't be too tight, so that it'd be loose and hold it all in place. But that couldn't have taken more than 15 minutes max. So it doesn't take long at all. Just for fun, I put a few ball buttons on then afterwards, which can or not go on. But fun way to embellish a sweater. You might try doing some of that out of those yarns that you have short lengths of it. Here's another one. And this one also is using that tapestry needle. And I first of all chalked a line or stitched, hand stitched just a couple little stripes going odd directions. Uh, just let your imagination flow and do a few lines of just hand basted threads here and there. And then this is also one movie's worth I sat down to watch and I simply wove those yarns in and out of this uh, wherever those hand stitched lines were. You can see on the back side of it that where you see a, a yarn place here on the back, you see a white space there in the front or the sweater space there. So it's simply woven in and out. Very easy to do using a very colored yarn in this case. After I was finished, I did a few little uh, shags here and there, stitched on a few others or knotted on a few others just to give it a finished look. But again, a designer sweater out of a stock sweater. So you're just embellishing your wardrobe and doing something that looks like you spent a mint on it. Now what I also love about this, oh, let me show you what else while I, while I have it on my mind. This yarn, not only can you do those things by hand, you can do some terrific things on the machine. Couching is one of the terrific things that you can do. And what couching is, is simply zigzag stitching. 
So I'm just going to put a piece of fabric down here, any piece of fabric, and I'm going to one of those raveled yarns, a couple of them, and I have them, oh, about four ply is what I have right now because I have them twisted around again. If I would just put that down under the foot and zigzag across that, it uh, makes some nice effects. And as I go along, I might, even if I wanted to, I could curve this and go around corners. So this is couching. And you can do some really terrific things with this couching that you might be interested in trying to see exactly how it works. These are fastened down now for good. And uh, different colors, different fabrics. Kind of a fun idea. Something you might try. But what I also like about a Ruana or any of these big wraps is the fact that I haven't really done anything to this. I haven't destroyed it. Just because I raveled out the edge and just because I cut this center up the front, I didn't do anything really. And these are popular right now, but maybe in a year or two you won't see any of them around. Well, I would hate to waste this great piece of fabric uh, after that uh, much time has elapsed. So what I will do is just spread it out, put a pattern on it. What I could still make out of this, uh, a couple of shows or so ago, I had a one-layer coat, and it was mohair also. This is a great place to cut that one-layer coat later. Here is that coat, and remember it looked like this. Well, I still have the fold of the fabric here that I could use for the back. I could put the pattern back here on the fold. And on the front, there's an opening here already. Well, it's a coat. You want an opening. So that just does fine. So you could still make this coat a year or two down the line, and if you love that fabric, keep on using it for something. Another little garment that I have here is a jacket. And this was also cut out of the same fabric. I, I started out with three yards of this fabric, I think, and uh, so I saved a yard to do this jacket. Actually, I was making a vest out of it. And of course, what I did to make this vest is take my good old t-shirt pattern that you've seen me use a few times before, but with that t-shirt pattern here, that's exactly what I used to cut out the vest part of it. And then I decided maybe I'd use this more if I had a jacket, if I had some sleeves. Luckily, I had a sweater that I wasn't wearing that could go into this. So I've cut up a sweater. I did a little of that sweater cutting last week. And if you can get up the nerve to do it, I have parts of an old sweater here. Now, my original sweater, and this is a great place to use sweater yardage, too. It isn't too often, maybe, that you'd have a sweater that just matched it. But my old sweater had really skinny arms on it, really skinny sleeves, so I didn't even use those. What I did is cut up the body of the sweater to uh, do these sleeves so that they'd be bigger. And what I have up here at the neck is the original turtleneck that was on the sweater that I've simply cut up. I've added a button here and a little tab of the woven fabric over on this side so that it buttons up. So I've got a nice little jacket, very easy, unlined, one layer, just finish the seams on the serger, put elastic at the bottom, and sweater or a jacket, just very, very easily. Now, in doing these sweaters, you sometimes need to do a little worrying about uh, what's going to happen? How do you stitch these? If you stitch them on the machine without stabilizing them, you might have a problem because, of course, it stretches out a little bit. So you might have to stabilize them with a little oh, uh, seam tape or perhaps uh, uh, something that will uh, not let them stretch. I'm going to do this on the serger, though. And on the serger, you can have the same problem. Look what happens, for instance, if I just get in here and serge. And with these loose sweater knits, these rib knits, because they are so very stretchy, after I get this serge, notice all the ruffles I have. Those ruffles aren't too wonderful. This is why you want to stabilize it with some sort of tape, a woven tape that won't let it stretch. Or if you have differential feed on your machine, I'll just put this down to differential here, and with it down there, I can do the same thing and it won't stretch out. So see what capacities you have, what exactly you can do, and uh, take great pains on scraps of this to do it so that it won't do anything nasty. So you can see the difference here. Either stabilized with a tape or using a differential feed. This certainly looks a lot better over on this side than the original roughly one does. So try it on scraps first to make sure you have whatever technique is gonna take mastered before you do it on your good garment. Well, so much for that. The dress I'm wearing had some left over from it. I didn't uh, use the whole thing from this dress. So what I had left over was uh, enough for a shawl. This shawl I uh, 
had about a half yard left, and it was enough to uh, look like a decent shawl, but it wasn't very long. It really wasn't all that wide. I needed to make it longer to fling it around this dress or to put it over a shoulder or whatever by extending it with a big fringe. This is where I'll just pull out one of the yarns. This is where you might use one of these uh, loop turners or again, a big tapestry needle. But if I put this through and I catch the yarn, the loop of the yarn here, and I close that little trap door and pull it through and release it, then I can just put it through this loop and that's an easy way to put a fringe on a scarf. So that might be another good way to use up that little bit of extra so that you make a really complete outfit, have the wrap on it and make it look like it was uh, done by a designer, of course. Uh, I had a suit on the other day or I had a suit on one of the shows that looked like this. Now what I loved about this suit when I bought it is the fact that not only did they have this stripe in the shop, but they also had a neat coordinate. And the coordinate was this checked one. So of course I got some of it too because what I decided to do with this checked one is make a shawl to put over the shoulder to make it a little bit warmer than it would have been. So it's a check and a stripe, these coordinates. So right now all I've done to this shawl is fringe it. And I only fringed it slightly. You can see here that my fringe is only perhaps half inch long. I didn't want to waste much of this fabric, so I made a very small fringe because what I'm going to do with this after shawls are no longer around because fashion changes all the time. I don't know how many years they're going to be around, but when they do go, I haven't wasted this fabric. I can uh, make a three-piece outfit by putting my pants pattern on, and here I've done this in Pellon so that it, I can use it repeatedly without it uh, falling apart as a paper pattern would. I can put my pants pattern on it though, cut out a very a pair of pants with the greatest of ease and have it go with my jacket so that it will have either checked pants or a striped skirt. And again, it does double duty. It goes several ways and it's kind of a neat thing to do when you see extra things like this in the shop. Go ahead and get them so that you can plan ahead, extend your wardrobe through the next several years because uh, when you put a great deal of time and money also into this type of garment, you certainly don't want it to become obsolete immediately. You want to get some years out of it instead of one season. So, another idea? I think you might be able to use that. Uh, we've been wearing so many shawls, but let's look at a couple of different types here. Now, some of the shawls that you either buy the yardage in the store, or you can buy ready-made shawl, ready-to-wear shawls, but this is one that I did buy in a store. It was the yardage. You just buy one panel of it is how it works out. And after I got it home, I raveled out about a half inch on all four sides. So they usually ravel very easily. This one, of course, is a border print all the way around. Now, another one that I have here is not a border print. This one is simply yardage. And uh, so no border there. It's just the fabric. Well, naturally, you know that I'm going to make something else out of this, too, when the shawl is gone, when you no longer see them. I'm going to put a pattern on and cut it out of something. Now, this one's easy because it's just yardage. You know, there is nothing different about it, no borders on it. So this one's easy. You can all use your imagination and think of some things that you can do with this one. That's not going to be a problem. The one that might be a problem is this border print. What are you going to do with it? Well, what I'm going to do with it, I'm doing it first mentally because I'm going to go through magazines and find some things that tell me, aha, that's what I can do. This is a good idea. But think about it a while first to decide exactly what can be done. Here's one idea I had. I'm going to fold that shawl in half so that I have a fold here and I have the raw edges out here. And uh, my favorite pattern, as you well know by now, is this t-shirt pattern. So here's the top. I'm going to f turn it over. I'll turn the fabric over. Maybe that'll make it easier. Okay, I'll turn the fabric over here and of course I'd get it all together very carefully and make sure that the upper layer and the under layer were together so the print exactly matched. But then I could put this blouse pattern uh, here. I'll bring it up and I can't make it quite long enough. Notice that it doesn't come all the way to the center. Here's the very center of this scarf. This one comes beyond, so it would take more than half the scarf. That's not a problem. Look at where the waistline is. Do you really need that much? And if so, could you extend it with another fabric? So what I will do instead is make it this much shorter, which isn't tragic. That little bit I can live with. So I would cut that. I would put my pattern back down on the other side 
and I would also fold the same amount down of it. And by the time I cut this pattern front and the pattern back on the fold, I would come out of it with a nice little blouse. And that blouse would be looking like this. Okay, here is the blouse. And you can see that that is just the t-shirt pattern. I'll put it down on the table and hold the pattern up to it so that you can see this is exactly what has been done. And there I did make a blouse. Okay, I did cut it off. I didn't add any other fabric to it anyway. I just used the border as it was. So instead of the way I told you, instead of having the neck up here and the neck way down at the other end, what I actually did was this. I put the necks here in the middle. So, okay, another way to do it. It could go either way. It wouldn't matter which way. But if you put it this way, then it just cuts it off short. Now, the fact that I cut mine off short because I didn't have enough, I do have just a selvage edge down there because uh, I actually, I'll have to admit, cut it out of another scarf since I obviously I haven't cut this one up yet. I bought two lengths of it to see what I could do with it. But here I have the selvage down on the edge, so that would be the hem. My waist would be about here. I could either wear this as an over blouse. Since the waist is here, I could belt that very nicely or I could wear it tucked in, but I would want to keep it around. I don't want to get rid of this because at the same time I bought the scarf lengths, I bought some plain print, but plain, no border, yardage, and made this sort of sarong skirt. I want to keep on wearing this. I have a couple of tops that go with it also, so I would hate for them to go to waste. Therefore, uh, making the shawl into a, a blouse that I can wear with that skirt is kind of a good idea. Now, and it was just hemmed under. I just cut the sleeves out there, the cap sleeves. I just cut them out long enough, a little bit longer than this perhaps, so that I could turn a hem under. And I hemmed those by hand. By machine would do just as well as you prefer. I did, of course, make a little opening here. And this, again, was just using the facing front and back from the uh, uh, pattern, the t-shirt pattern. So it's just using their facings and that facing comes around here as it would on a back opening. So no problem, just use that pattern as it is. Cut it a little bit shorter so that since you don't have enough length, if you don't. Some shawls might be big enough that you have enough length and it'll be the same length as your pattern. But you can improvise, you can do something that works out just right. Well, I've only used the midsection of this scarf. I still have the edges and it seems to me that they ought to do something good. So what I've done to the edges is this. Uh, these edges here, this border print here, is now the front of a sweater. Now remember last week, I had a sweater that I actually cut up. This is the same thing. This was a turtleneck sweater that I had here. I simply cut it up the front because I knew that it's going to work all right, even though I don't know how to knit it back together if it falls apart. It wasn't going to. It wasn't going to unravel. So I simply cut it up the center and all the way through the collar. Here's the one I started cutting last week, and you can see how easily that cuts. It's just a matter of cutting one rib all the way up. And what I did last week, unfortunately, is cut the turtleneck off. I should have left it on. Here is the turtleneck that I cut off because when I would get way up to the top, I would want to cut straight through that turtleneck. So I'll just go ahead and cut through it and cut along one rib in it also. And then after that is all cut and opened up, it makes a great collar. So uh, you can do that. You can make a cardigan sweater out of an old turtleneck sweater. Something to try. You can also do that, remember, on any scale and any size. For you, fine, but also in children's sizes. Might be fun to make a cardigan out of one of their sweaters or sweats to go with something they have. Now what I've done on this, the extra around the edges here where I cut it up, I just bound this edge with some bias. And remember we've talked before about how to do true bias so that you cut it at a 45 degree angle and this edge is bound all the way around. And then down the front I did a little bit of experimenting here to make sure it was going to work out right. So what I wanted to see is do I need to stabilize this? Do I need to beef up this fabric a little bit? Because it was a really thin fabric and I thought perhaps I'd better have a little something under it to uh, strengthen it, to reinforce it. So what I have done to beef it up is before I applied it to the sweater, I pressed on, I fused on a little bit of this easy knit. I tried a couple of different interfacings and decided the trico, the knit trico was going to be best for this particular fabric. So I fused that in place and then I cut around the design and uh, just pinned it in place and sat and stitched over the top of this. Uh, easy? Okay. 
because it already had that easy knit in it, by the way, that's a reinforcement, that is an interfacing, and therefore I could do the machine buttonholes every place. So, another easy thing to do. Uh, check what machine buttonholes your machine can make and try every one of them on a scrap of this before you actually do it in the sweater just to make sure it's going to work out to your liking when you're finished. So, neat new outfit out of that castaway shawl. Now, what if I had wanted long sleeves on this? I'd have somewhat of a problem because it doesn't have enough fabric out here to put a sleeve pattern on. I think I swept it off on the floor, so I'll pick it up. Here's the sleeve pattern for this same t-shirt. And if I wanted to do a long sleeve on this, I can't do it because of the border print. It has to be folded here in the middle so that it would all work out right in the center of the blouse. So I just have two narrow pieces here going up and down the sides. There's no way I could have gotten a sleeve out of here unless I pieced it and did some striping, which is another idea. You could do that. But uh, there's another way you can do this and have long sleeves and, in fact, not use a pattern at all. What if you would do this? I find that if I fold this scarf instead of lengthwise on grain, if I would fold this from corner to corner diagonally so it's a bias cut instead, look how it does go from one hand to the other. It goes all the way along the whole length. That means it would make a blouse and go from wrist to wrist. So measure yourself with a tape measure then maybe. How long do you measure from one wrist to the other or going across your shoulders? And if it's long enough to do this, then that might be a possibility. So I found this would also make a terrific bias cut blouse. So here's the way I did it. I first of all put it out like this and did a little bit of measuring. Now what I know is that if I put my t-shirt pattern in place, I'll just use that. If I would put this in place, I can see that uh, it's almost going to work. Here's the center. I'm just coming up the center of this design. So here I'm putting the pattern on so that this is the center of it, the fold of it. And uh, what I have here is a little corner gone. And I don't know that that's too tragic. I think that I might on this corner be able to fudge and have this blouse also a little bit shorter. I don't think it needs to be all that long. So that might be a thought. Also, I might take my tape measure and measure this pattern to see if, do I really need it this wide? How wide are my hips? How much do I need to go around? I'm not going to let the camera see how much it needed to go around. But I would measure that and decide exactly. And of course, whatever it takes to go around, uh, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and see if the pattern piece is that wide down at the hips. And if the pattern piece is wider than your hips, that means, ah, terrific. What we have here is some length or some width that we don't need. We can cut it off, and that means that maybe I can make it longer than I would if I had to have it wider. So check your hip width and make sure that that's wide enough. Then what I can do on this, because I'm not actually going to use this pattern, I was only checking it for length and width is all. I'm not really going to use a pattern. I'm going to make this patternless. I am going to, instead of using that, fold it in half again. So now it's like this. Now what I have is a big fold here. I have four layers of fabric. A big fold here and a fold up here at the top. And what I am going to do with this is determine with that tape measure exactly how wide I want this. And of course, I already said it has to be wide enough down here at the bottom to uh, allow for my hips, whatever they are, I won't tell you. And it also then has to be wide enough because it's going to be a blouse that pulls on. So it has to be wide enough to go over my bust. My waist isn't even going to matter because it's going to be straight up and down on the side seams. So I just want to make sure whatever width that is that I can cut it here and I'll cut it around here and I'll have sleeves. All I need to decide out here, because this is going to be the wrist, I just need to decide out here how wide an opening do I need to get my hand through. So I would possibly just put a pin in here. I could measure it, but I can also just do it physically and put a pin in here and see if I can get my hand through it. And if I can, then I can't. Yeah, I can. Okay, so right here where I have that pin, that's going to be wide enough to make that blouse. So here's the pin. I'll put it on the other side so it shows better. Here's the pin down here. And what I am going to do then is just cut some sort of a shape. I would probably chalk it. I would probably do something here to make sure I know what I want. I would double check the width again here before I do any cutting. And then I would go ahead and cut. 
what I did with this is cut out a pattern for myself, and this is what that pattern looked like. It looked just like this, so that you can see it comes up straight here on my side seams, and this is under my arm, it rounds around, and it comes down here to my wrist. And even though this is what I needed for my wrist, I actually cut the fabric off here, because I do want to have enough for a seam, of course. It's going to have a seam. The only seam that will be in this blouse will be under the arm. Then down here at the bottom, I really don't need those peaks coming down in points front and back, so I'm going to cut those off, but I'm going to use them. And then all I have to do here at the neck is cut one straight line right from about here to here, just big enough that I can pull my head through it. And what I'm going to end up with is this blouse. It's all cut on the bias. Uh, what I've cut off the bottom is now the neck piece. Uh, everything works out just beautifully down here at the bottom. I decided I would just hem that fringed area. I would just cut off the fringe and hem it so that it comes down and sort of a little point on the wrist. And I kind of like that effect. The only thing I have wasted out of that whole scarf cutting it this way in one piece is this piece of fabric that my, uh, uh, my pattern uh, left over. Now something else is kind of nice out of the little bits of extra. Remember I showed you this on another of the programs, the jigsaw program. This was the same fabric that was used as the basis of this purse. So these quick wraps are great. And the fact that the yardage can later be cut and used is just an added bonus. Well from this you also get the idea that a blouse can be made very easily without a pattern. So join us next time and I'll show you how to make about a dozen variations on this patternless blouse.